I just invented the chocolate teapot. <laughs> Welcome back to Pointless History, uh, where we take the strangest pieces of history and present them to you in the funniest way we possibly can. And this week, we are looking at the weirdest and craziest inventions from history, predominantly from the early 20th century. And there's some really weird ones out there, beginning with the Isolator, invented by a uh, sci-fi fan, Huggy Gernsberg, Huggy, I believe it's Huggy, <laughs> Huggy Gernsberg, <laughs> in 1925. It was a huge tank, and I'll put a picture of this up somewhere, if I can find the button for it. And it's a, basically, it's like a diving helmet, but it was to help you concentrate in your work. So if you were working away, you could put it on, and it would, it would block it. The idea was that it would block out all outside noise and all outside sound. It was so insulated that you actually had to have an oxygen tank pumping air into the helmet to help you work. And it could only let people who were looking out of it could only see one line of text. But it was really thin slips in the mask. <laughs> so you could only see one line kind of text at a time. Which I don't know about you, but I reckon that would be more of a hindrance than a help. Like, oh, I find my glasses fairly annoying when I'm reading and writing. Like, uh, so who knows what you'd find about that? Imagine if you had bad breath in there, just constantly going oh, around. Imagine if you ran out of oxygen and just died at your desk. That'd be pretty grim. What I've gone with is um, an invention to keep out the rain and snow from people's faces. Uh, it was pretty much a massive beak. Was it the hat? No. <laughs> it was a massive see-through beak that came out to like here. And um, yeah, it was just a really weird invention. It was pretty much... Over there, yeah. Uh, so it was just a long thing. It's like if you've ever seen like, the Plague Doctors or anything like that, it was just out here was to keep all the rain and snow to come sliding out the front um, and they realised it looked absolutely ridiculous and it pretty much failed instantly. Nobody wore it. Um, it had a wee brief period for a couple of years where you know, everyone out like hipsters went for it but no. <laughs> 1920s hipsters radio. Continuing on more bizarre trends from the early 20th century I found the uh, rather bizarre item of clothing known as the wooden bathing suit which quite literally was a bathing suit made of wood. I'm not sure can you imagine that nowadays? Can you imagine Kim Kardashian? Actually, I say that, I can absolutely imagine Lady Gaga in a bamboo bathing suit or something. Yeah, I, I can see. imagine her in one made of like, yeah. children or something. Like She's a weird woman. Anyway, <laughs> these were made out of very thin um, spruce wood, and for that reason, the girls who wore them were often nicknamed Spruce Girls. Because I imagine the names. Um, they, were, they were fashioned from really thin spruce wood, and they were supposed to be as comfortable, flexible, and practical as ordinary breathing suits. I don't know if there was something wrong with ordinary bathing suits at this point, or if this was like employed by a company who um, sold wood to try and get people to wear. But they did take off <laughs> well, in a very small way. They took I off. think you had so many other things they could have gone for. <laughs> they could offer so many more useful things, but apparently not. Um, I suppose they, they were buoyant enough that they could actually help and encourage the even the most timid swimmer to be able to take the plunge, and that was the kind of selling point over an ordinary bikini. Um, I would suggest that perhaps no. You look like a log. The second one I found that I actually really liked was because it was uh, apparently tried as a hangover cure. Um, obviously, it didn't, it didn't work. This is good. This is good. We should adapt this for students because we could sell this. No, this really, once you hear it. It's... Oh, no, I'm sure it's going to work. I believe in these people. We've had some good inventions so far. Uh, okay, so pretty much it was just a horrible kind of almost gimp mask style thing. Right over it, you had to slip in your mouth and eyes. I'm out. Yeah, I, oh, it looks horrible. I mean, what it was is they would stick ice cubes all over it. I'm back in. To try and cool you down and like, bring your temperature down. But uh, after testing it, they just found that people were lying in their bed. It just melted and covered them in water. They, they were just soaking. So pretty much mm. that did go nowhere. That was an awful, awful invention. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's awful. My next one comes, and I feel almost bad seeing this as a pointless invention because it seems funny to us now. But I have to say, at the time it was invented, this was genuinely the height of fashion and it was very popular. So I really it shouldn't be on this list, but I personally find it very funny, so it's in the list. Yep. It's called the collapsible top hat. So literally a top hat where you can do this and flatten it back out. <laughs> uh, I mean, you might laugh at that, but actually it had its uses. It was, in, it was patented on the 5th of May in 1812 by Thomas Francis Dolman. And his original one was sort of an elastic-based hat that could be crushed and would spring back up. However, later versions after that pattern ran out were actually spring-loaded, so they'd literally be a pop-up spring in the top I hat. Love this. Which sounds comical and sounds hilarious, but actually they were sold as opera hats. And the idea was that when you went to the opera or the theatre, you would sit down, like obviously these were for more 
the privileged side who was who wore the top hat yeah. for formal occasions. And when you went to the when you went to the theatre or the cinema, you could sit down and then so the person behind you could see, you would you fold up your hat and put it on your person. So you just sit on it or you hold on to it, but it would be flat, it would be easy to keep. And rather than having a whole hat sitting in your lap or annoying the person behind you, you could collapse your top hat and put it away. And that was the idea. And these were hugely popular actually for a little while. And a lot of people had them. Um, but they, of course, the nowadays they seem ridiculous because people don't really wear hats anymore. Because they did I, then. Be good for like um, either summer or just for a festival. You think about it, you can take your hat off. Just <laughs> it'd be good. It'd be good. It would be good. It's like it's like a, maybe it's like an old-fashioned version of your, of like the T-shirt cannon. You had like the hat for <laughs> so they throw a hat into the crowd and like hey, I got a hat. <laughs> as soon as you started talking about it, I instantly just thought it was like the worst like version of odd job from James Bond. <laughs> Where, you, where the hat hits you, it goes poof. So the uh, third and final one for me uh, was invented in the 1920s in Paris. Yeah, what did I get wrong? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, I just... My bad. Please ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much what it was is called the car shovel. Um, so Paris was having a lot of problems with people getting run over um, what did you do? by cars. And they thought, right, well, instead of addressing the actual problem, which is pretty much, you know, people running across the street or people driving too fast, they decided to put a scoop, uh, which was kind of like a seat in the front of cars. So what it meant was if you ran some over, they would just land comfortably in the front of the car and <laughs> just be sitting there <laughs> and like that. revving at 90 miles an hour. But that's actually where the problem came from. It doesn't matter. If you're going fast, you're still going to get hit. Like, and it's going to hurt really badly. Because... If you get hit from the side on, you're not going to just like comfortably land into a seat. <laughs> you would have to be standing kind of in like a starfish position. You'd have to be seat. walking away from it. Like, yeah. You'd have walking to be, down. Like, I don't know who crosses the street like that. <laughs> Maybe fans that's who cross the street. Crab walk. Crab walk, of course. And Scott Mills. Straight to come dancing joke for any of you out there. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this week's. Where we said we'd try and keep it light. Uh, but we did end up on running people we, over. We are actually like, because I've just realised the sun has come straight. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is we're gonna have to end quickly because he's gonna burn because he's ginger. If you enjoyed the episode, please do like and subscribe. It does mean a lot to us. We're a brand new channel, as again, it, it does it genuinely. I know everyone says this on YouTube, and it's like I think you hear all the time, but it really does help us. It's gonna help us a lot. So please give it a like, and uh, also put in the comments other weird inventions that we've missed. Uh, there's loads, loads more, but we'd like to hear from you guys as well. Or your own inventions that you think are kind of undiscovered. Yeah, that's <laughs> and if they're really good, we'll steal them. Like Jesus in the light here. <laughs>